Hi and happy Monday. It is Monday after school 348. Um, my coworker and I had some chatting to do after school about some things that have come up. Um, so we did, we chatted, we got some plans made, a little bit of, a little bit of, maybe a bit of plans. Anyway, um, today actually started yesterday as far as um, things that happened. Um, today has been brought to you by, I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> so a little bit of crying, a lot of crying actually. And it was because I had a student in my classroom test positive for the virus. And so because of that, um, I had to, I have had to quarantine several kids because of proximity issues. Um, you know, they sit close in close proximity to the person. And so that was a big fat bummer and nobody was very happy. Um, rightly so. Uh, their teacher's not super thrilled because, hey, guess what happens next Monday? The state test. Hey, guess whose kids aren't going to be back yet? Mine. So I know that was kind of an obvious answer. But anyway, yeah, I'm not really happy. After talking to my principal, I tend to get more keyed up about things maybe than I should. However, you know, teaching's my job. That's what I do. And I've been working real hard to get everybody ready and now to find out that it doesn't really matter because they're not going to be here. It does matter, but oh no, there's a bunny in the road. Hurry, little bunny, go. <gasps> Hold on, buddy, go, bunny, go. <gasps> he made it. Yes, and he's so cute. He's like this big. It's a baby bunny. He made it. Life's good. Um, I was talking about testing. So... I am one that I always say I teach kids, I don't teach to test, but at the same time, I also hold them very um, to very high standards and get them ready for what they need to be able to know, which coincidentally is kind of what we test. So, I mean, it all, of course we teach to the test. Every teacher teaches to some sort of test or standard, right, that we want them to be able to master. So. That being said, I am not really happy because when you take an eight or nine year old and you change something about their environment, well, anybody at any age, but especially young kids like that, this is their very first time doing a standardized test. This is, you know, the big Mac Daddy test that we have been telling them about. And when you take them out of the environment that they're used to testing in with their teacher, with their peers, with everybody, and you put them in a alternative testing situation, a few things can happen. Number one, they get scared. So they aren't focusing fully on the test questions, lane change. I don't know why I think that's such a big deal, but it's all I get to do on my way home. I literally drive straight on one road all the way home. So it's a big deal. Anyway, uh, one of two things. So they get scared, they don't perform well. Number two, they get scared and they rush and they just hurry to get out. And the people that are going to be proctoring the makeup tests, they don't know the kids like their teachers do because they're not their teachers and they haven't been sitting in class with them. So if these kids say, I'm done, the proctors are gonna go, cool, get out. And I don't fault them for that. If I have a kid who I think is rushing or who I see doing this or you know something, I'm gonna circumvent that problem immediately and go over to them and say, look, focus on what you're doing, take a deep breath, get in the zone, you can do this, and that's not gonna happen possibly with another person proctoring because we all have jobs to do, we're all super busy during the day, so where these extra bodies are gonna come to uh, give these tests to kids who have missed their testing, I just, I'm just, I just wanna give them their best shot, that's all. All, when it boils down to it, I just want them to have as good a first experience at this 
stupid test as possible. Sorry, kids, if you're listening. It is, it's not a stupid test. Well, it kind of is, but it's just, it's not a very fair test, I feel like. But that's a whole nother story. So anyway, this is what's on my mind today. My kids, um, three or more, I didn't get to see them all before they left, um, Three of them were in tears and sobbing that they had to leave. And that makes me so upset. Not that they don't have a wonderful home to go home to. It has nothing to do with that. They have to be away from their friends. They have to be away from their learning. And they really do love being at school. I mean, some of these kids, that's their happiest place. And, you know, outside of playing the Xbox or whatever, that's what they do. And I'm just sad. And they were just sad. But it is what it is. Um... They're quarantined until next week. It's not the end of the world. However, for them today, it kind of felt like it was. I'm going to go home and get dinner started. We bought um, last week, when we did our grocery run, we did a regular grocery run because um, we weren't able to get our groceries brought to our car last week. Um, so we went in and we bought these things. They were, pre I don't, I'm not a big fan of like pre-wrapped or made food, but honestly, these looked pretty good. They were, um, oh my, what is happening up here? We have a car sitting in the middle of the road. What are you doing? <sighs> okay, I'm fine. Um, pre-wrapped chicken and bacon and like some kind of seasoning and my husband looked at me and goes those look really good so I think we were both starving when we were in the grocery store when we were in the grocery store and that's never good but they did look kind of good and I think they have to be done by today so we're gonna grill them tonight and I don't know what's gonna go with them maybe a napkin I don't know maybe I have potato I think I have potatoes left so I didn't plan groceries very well Anyway, um, darn it, we're going to have to order in. I mean, what are you going to do? Anyway, we only spent like half what we normally spent. No, that's not true. About two-thirds what we normally spend on groceries. So, you know we're going to be eating out because I didn't get food. Um, they didn't have any chicken that didn't expire the next day. So, except for this stuff, which we got, which was like a week and a half out. So, we bought that. Anyway, I'll let you know how it is if I remember to tell you. So, remind me in the comments. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hello and happy Tuesday. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, the fan was on high because it is hot. It's 88. Blah. Um, but we had a good run. Spring was great that one day. Now we had, all last week was beautiful. I love the cooler temperatures, cooler weather, so I'm a little bit sad, but that's okay, because we had a good run. I am on my way to my hair appointment. I'm super excited, gonna get some new color. Not new color, just retouched up color. And just sitting still in a chair, sounds amazing. But I left a little bit early from work. It's just now uh, 3.30 and I left about not, not even five minutes early really, but um, so that I could stop and get a soda because I just really want one right now. And um, I didn't get one last weekend because I just wasn't feeling it. A lot of times I'll get one on Saturday um, when I'm out at garage sales and stuff. There is a wreck up here, so I'm gonna focus, focus, focus. What is happening? Oh, yikes, three cars, ouch. Anyway, I am on my way there, gonna stop at QT, get a drink. Today was really good, um, partly because I was down to 15 students, 15, holy cow. That should be 100%, thousand million percent, the cutoff. There should never be a class with more than 15 students if we're doing it right and if we are actually meeting each child's needs. Just said it. There it is right out there in the in the open. Yes, I know that <clears throat> older kids can sit more to a room and get more accomplished. They need maybe less one-on-one -on -one help help than some of the youngers. However, why? I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if we cared enough about education that we 
put fewer kids in a class so that everybody built just stronger relationships and I mean just makes sense right so that's not what we do changing lanes anyway I think that would be great I miss like crazy my kids that are not there right now and I feel really really bad and I just want to cry when I think of how sad they were I got all their work that they could do um, to them up to the office and some went home with a sibling some uh, the parents came and picked it up the ones that are um, sick obviously did not but we had a wonderful staff member take it right to their front doorstep for them um, talk about door-to-door -door service right so that was yesterday anyway I just um, I love my coworkers. They're the best. They're honestly the reason that I stay where I'm at because if it were just a school and not a family, I would work closer to home. I'm only 20 minutes, but I pass about, let's see, one, two, and I don't pass it because it's in the opposite direction, but it's really close. One, two, three, four, five. I pass like eight schools on my way to my school. So, I mean, I could work closer to home, right? Anyway, coworkers, are the people who make the difference and obviously the students but they come and go co-workers we've been together for a long time several of us have and I really appreciate all of them so much um today was good less kids meant more help for each of them so that was good we played such a fun round of um <clears throat> flashcard war at the end of the day I had four ki five kids one two, three, four, five kids that wanted to play. Um, we broke up into groups. Some were on the computer. Some were doing their math mystery. And the rest of them were back. Um, some of them I was helping on a uh, problem that we had done. But when we were done, we decided to play Math War. So broke up the flashcards and we were doing multiplication Math War. If you got the question right, you earned the card. And oh my gosh, it got a little wild. It got a lot wild, but we were having so much fun. They were um, yelling their answers at me and then would laugh because it was so loud. And then they were trying to come across the table at the card and try to grab it. And it was got a little wild and crazy. Seriously, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so I enjoy, um, you know, you got to make the best of what you have where you are. And right now I have 15 kids in class. So all that could be there today were there. And so for that, I was very thankful. And I was thankful I got to spend the extra time with them. Um, anyway, it was a great day. And I am excited for my soda and my hair appointment. So that's what I have going on this evening. My hair appointment usually takes a couple hours. Um, so I'll get home, probably pick up dinner on the way. And then I don't have any grading because we did um, things either all together today because we did a lot of test prep with not a lot of writing. We did it mostly on the computer, uh, up on the smart board. And then um, this afternoon in math, I went through all their work to see who needed help. And so that's how I pulled my kids for extra help today. So I have no grading. Um, I could put things in the grade book. I could enter in grades. Maybe I will. Not sure. Probably I won't because it's only Tuesday. Um, and that's it. So I will see you back here tomorrow unless something exciting happens at home that I want to tell you about. Otherwise, I will see you later. Hello and happy Wednesday. Welcome to Sideways Cam. Um, my, I have to figure out my mount on my um, windshield. So when I do, the videos will be straight again. Until then, it's the only way my phone will stay in the holder. If I turn it, yeah, it's just going to go flop. Anyway, today was our early release, and it was really a good day. We had fun again. We always try to, but, you know, it doesn't always work out. Um, we had a good day. What did we do? Um, we did some some test prep not a ton though because we had a shorter day overall okay i'm gonna try by golly all right
yeah, it's just not gonna work out. Um, we had a shorter day because it's our early release day. We had a special today, so we didn't have as long to do our work, but we did the um, uh, reading, we did some reading test prep, we did uh, some on the state site that gives you some samples to do. We talked about some of the ways that uh, the tests may be asked and how it might look different than what they're used to. So that was kind of good. A lot of testing uh, for third graders, you're not really, I mean, and a lot of people, a lot of grades, I'm sure, a lot of testing for third graders though, you're not really testing content, you're testing their ability to follow directions. And unfortunately that will trip a lot of them up and we won't really see what they know. So this is the second week that I was not able to put in a grocery order, which was weird. I think I mentioned in last week's vlog that our Walmart, um, someone, uh, set a fire they were trying to cause a distraction so they could steal things so that didn't work out very well for either the person who did it who got caught or for those of us who really wanted to pick up groceries last week and this week and the week before because the week two weeks ago is when it happened last week they were not open for grocery pickup and now this week they're not so I'm sad but whatever we're going grocery shopping this afternoon and yes I could put it off till the weekend except for no we're not gonna have um, food in the house if I do that I mean it's only two days we could struggle through on what we have but wouldn't be what we want just made a successful lane change and am on my way home and then we'll go get groceries um, today's PD was about uh, the science curriculum that we may adopt. Um, I say may adopt because right now there's three in the running and it's, I'm a little bit confused. We're going to purchase one of them or an entirely different one, who knows how that will ultimately end up. But there are three right now in the running for um, purchase. They would purchase it for all of next school year, whatever one, or um, some kind of uh, lend themselves better to K-5, and then some are more upper grade. Um, so they did say that we could adopt one for, not adopt, we could purchase one for the lower grades and then one for the higher grades, which makes a lot of sense. And they would purchase this for a year, just probably makes a lot of sense just to see if uh, we liked it, if it is as good as it seemed, you know, on the, the trials that we did. And then um, possibly we might be up for an adoption. I have not, let's see, I've been in our district for this, my 12th year. When I started 12 years ago, there was already a science book that was quite, I, I don't wanna say quite outdated, but it was several years past the adoption. That was 12 years ago. And so let's just say, let's just put five years on it. It probably was longer than that, but that would be 17 years since we've had anything new for science which means that I spend an awful lot of money and time finding science curriculum for my class. So I'm very excited that we might get something good. Uh, my partner and I went ahead and um, piloted, I think I've probably talked about this, um, Discovery Ed Tech, and it was, um, one unit we did the unit on adapting um adapting to new environments and it uh took into account like fossils and how do we know what we do know about animals and their adaptations and their environments and um it goes forward from there so i thought it was pretty good i kind of liked it but then um there's also one that the district got a Okay, let me see. 
through something. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. Blah, 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 blah. Um, somehow we ended up with Mystery Science, which if you, I've used the free version for years, which is Mystery Doug um, is one part of it. And uh, you get, uh, if you, if you send them your email address, you get a free little once a week um, science something in your email box. And it's like a little video clip and it's just a neat conversation starter that has to do with either a science phenomena, um, a current event, kind of sciencey current event. Anyway, the one for tomorrow is uh, about April Fools and pranks and things that have been done through different um, media outlets to trick people. One of them they talked about I had not heard of and I had no idea. There was a Boston news channel that put out a video. I can't remember what year they said and I didn't watch this whole um, Mystery Doug clip but I thought wow somebody uh, lost their job over this I guess. Um, they got in very big trouble for putting out a video clip of a erupting volcano that was in the area. Boston. Come on guys. So I mean I guess if you're just you click on the TV and you're not really paying attention and you're worried about your kids. So what happened, they showed a video clip of people trying to get out of town. They packed up their families, packed up their belongings, and were headed out of town. Big trouble, bad idea. Anyway, it was meant to be funny for April Fools, not so much if you're on your way out of town with your family. So anyway, that um, it makes me laugh a little bit and I, it shouldn't, it's not funny. A little bit funny. Anyway. They also showed a video clip of um, how people uh, altered a video of penguins through all kinds of video techniques and they made a video superimposed with penguins flying in. Well, penguins don't fly. So they talked about how they used that and said, oh, there's a whole new species of penguins that we've discovered and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wow. So talk about don't believe everything you read or see, you know, and we used to be able to say, I saw it with my own eyes. Well, great. These people saw it with their own eyes and were fooled. So I can't wait to talk about that with my kids tomorrow. They are going to love it because that's pretty cool stuff. They're going to really love the volcano one. I just, some of my kids are very, have very grown up sarcastic, not grown up in a bad way, but like older than third grade, um, senses of humor and they're just going to laugh anyway. And the penguins, that's pretty funny. So those, um, that was an example that I just watched a few minutes ago of a mystery Doug that you can get for free. Anyway, I'm not sure what or why or how, but we got access to the full paid version of the mystery science. It's through discovery, which is also the discovery. I, th I think I'm not wrong. I think I'm right. Weird. Um, anyway, it is, uh, really good and they have the lessons are laid out they have here's what you print out for the kids here's what you need to prep ahead of time you need uh, glue sticks and sticky notes and you need tape for this and man it's like having a teacher's assistant standing there telling you what you need and um, it seems really good and some of the activities look really fun um, there's one that I downloaded. Um, I haven't printed them out yet, but I downloaded it. It's an activity about, can you outrun a dinosaur? And it looks super cool. It's in the fossils and um, what we learned about from dinosaurs unit. Looks really cool. Can't wait to do that. I will let you know, I'm not doing it this week. This week, next week is test prep and, and, and testing. But after that, we can actually learn and have fun. Can't wait. Um, so the rest of my night is going to consist of grocery shopping, eating dinner, probably not even made by me. I'm just kind of over it. I'm tired. It is 92 degrees. I'm hot and cranky. So I'm not cranky. That's not true. 
I'm just hot and don't feel like cooking. So I am going to take some recipes with me though that I downloaded from a bunch of different Pinterest pins that I had or that I found um, using lemons because our lemon tree, OMG, I got like probably 30 lemons. So I need to do something with them besides give them away because most people here have lemon trees and they don't need mine. Anyway, I'm going to uh, try some new recipes with lemon and I will let you know how they turn out. Not tonight, but soon. I will talk to you soon. Hello, happy Friday. We made it through another long week. Um, it is, I'm at home, not driving, and it is 5.30, so we've already eaten dinner. I went through um, Filiberto's and got us our chicken quesadillas that we love. I even went through Dunkin' Donuts and got a coffee. So exciting. I just um, really wanted a pick-me-up. I wanted a treat. So I got in the line, and I was looking at my choices because I don't usually go there um, so, I mean, I, I like Dunkin' Donuts coffee. It's just that, I'm watching the lizard. I um, don't go there very often, so I'm not very well versed in anything except for just um, iced coffee. So, I was ready to order my iced coffee, and then I saw their cold brew, and so I thought, yes, I will have one. And then the guy who was in the drive-thru said, ma'am, would you like to try some sweet foam on that? okay so I did and it was really good I don't love sweet coffee usually but um and I definitely would not get this very often because it's really sweet but it was really good so I have it in the fridge I just took a few sips of it I'm gonna have it like just throughout the day tomorrow have a sip here sip there but what they do is they put um some kind of um I asked him what he recommended because I had no idea so he recommended some sort of regular sweet foam regular I think that's what he said and um it was sprinkled with cinnamon on top it was really good so that was a fun treat um I did not film yesterday or today on my way home I just needed to think some stuff through and it was really hot and I was not cranky but I was just tired and so and also my um uh mount that I keep the phone in was not working and I thought you know what it's not meant to be so I just did not record on my way home and instead Monroe and I are sitting here hanging out after dinner she's funny I wanted to show you something that I ordered and got in the mail this is a company that I had seen on another teacher's um channel and the company is called chalkboard candle company and this video is not sponsored i actually um uh subscribe to their instagram account and uh they sent me a message that said thank you for subscribing and you know check out our our different products so i did this one is the one i ordered they i'm not gonna lie they're a little bit expensive but I would rather pay a few dollars more and support a mom and pop business than, um, you know, get a little bit of a deal and support a huge chain, which I do plenty of. So this company is out of Minnesota and it is all natural coconut wax. And they have, I just love the labeling. I love the kind of bronze gold top. Um, but the scent that I got is, it's called School Days Freshly Brewed Coffee. That's what it looks like inside and oh my gosh. I wish there was smell of vision because this smells so good. I wanna burn it, but I don't wanna burn it. You know what I mean? So I'm super excited. It says that this lasts um, 60 plus hours of burn time. So that's pretty good. I think I paid, she did give me a coupon code when, um, for if I wanted to order. Um, and I think it was 10% off. And I wanna say the original price of a candle is $28. And then um, with the 10% discount, it covered part of the shipping. The shipping was like uh, six or eight bucks, something like that. So it was a little bit expensive, not what I'm used to paying or buying. However, it is seems to be really good quality. They're hand poured. It's a 
mom and pop business and I just, I told her I loved the font they use. Isn't that cute, school days? So anyway, if you are looking to get a, kind of maybe a gift for somebody, for a teacher friend, um, or if you're looking for a gift for a teacher, I would, um, I would recommend these candles. Smells really good, have not burned it yet, but it tells you on the bottom, it's the typical um, trim the wick to a quarter inch before lighting don't you know set it near things that can burn just some real good solid advice anyway so i wanted to share that with you as far as this week has gone it has been busy um it's been hot and so that kind of when the weather changes so dramatically it kind of um sucks my will to live <laughs> and it's just it was really hot it was um on my drive home in the car today it said 95 um, so it was hot. I mean, it's April 2nd and that's crazy. But anyway, it, um, is Arizona and we never know what we're getting except for hotter as the months creep by. So this week in school was busy. We did tons of test prep. Um, I say tons, yes and no. We did some every day. We went to the state site and went on the, um, sample test pages. Um, so that the kids would know, um, you know, the different tools that they had available to them. I wanted them to be able to kind of see the directions as far as you have to go on and check your um, volume and if you can hear the voices and the sounds, if you can see the videos that they show to make sure that your computer's working properly. So now they kind of um, get that. We've done it for three days now this week we did it we logged in and they did it on a computer so um they should be well versed in how to do that come monday morning monday morning is our writing portion of our test and then tuesday we have part one reading part one math and then nothing wednesday thursday friday but the following monday we have part two reading and math so then we are done and then we get to just learn and have fun, which is the best time of the year. Yes, the kids are antsy, but its they know so much and we, they've worked so hard, you've worked so hard, it's time to have fun a little bit. So we do, um, my partner and I always do a countdown. We've done, the last few years, we've done an ABC countdown. So, and um, we did more than one letter per day. So um, <clears throat> today, if it's the first day, the countdown might be A and B day, apples and bananas. I made that up. But um, something fun that starts with A and B. And then going on through the days and through the alphabet. So that has been kind of fun. However, this year, um, I thought it might be kind of fun to do the balloon method. So just checking on Monroe. So the balloons, um, I'm sure if you're a teacher, you've seen it, but I'm going to try it. I think it just looks kind of fun. You blow up however many balloons you want, but we thought maybe 10, like the last 10 days of school, not including our very last day, because that is um, uh, awards day, and it's a short day also. So <clears throat> inside the balloon, you put an activity, like maybe <clears throat> one day might be popsicles and picnic. I'm also making that up. So you might have like at the end of the day, get to sit outside on, beach towels and eat popsicles. I don't know. Anyway, something to look forward to. Sorry, my nose itches. I'm getting money, right? Money or company. Either one's great. Um, company bringing me money. That'd be the best. Anyway, um, that is what I think we're going to do this year. Sounds kind of fun. We were talking about, well, if we let the kids pick and they pick different activities on different days, then we're not going to get to do them together. Not that we can be really together, but, you know, like somebody brings in popsicles one day, somebody brings in, I don't know, Play-Doh another day. We can't really share the same way. So I think I'm going to suggest just numbering the balloons one through 10, and then we each pop balloon 10 and nine and eight like that. So then we'll have the same activities. Kids won't get to pick a balloon, but that's okay. They get to have fun. Um, let's see what else. A lot of test prep. Um, I am really sad about the number of kids who are upset about the test. 
Monroe just skadoodled a little bit. Um, it's very disheartening to see how upset some of them are um, and nervous and worried. And I think a lot of the nervous and worry comes from just the amount of publicity over the test. Um, we are required to send several letters home talking about the test and its importance. And in Arizona, we have a move on when reading law. And that law states that if your child does not pass the reading portion of the third grade test, that they can and I don't know that it says they will be held back, but I, I'm pretty sure the verbiage is that they will be retained in third grade. And I could talk for the next six hours about how I feel about that, but I'm not going to. You are welcome. <laughs> I might in another video, just pretty soon one day, I might share a lot of opinions. We'll see. Anyway, I do not agree with, um, throwing that out there in third grade for lots of reasons, but it is my job and my duty to make the parents and children aware of this. So I try to do it in a way that um, I can get the message across without panicking anyone. Um, I also know that in all the years we've done the AZ Merit, I've never had a student not pass and move on. Um, some are protected by special education laws um, and the law does not apply in the same form to all children equally. Um, so it just really depends. But I think it stinks that we have eight and nine year olds who are, um, sorry, playing with my hair tie, who are panicking over a test. And it's a test that their teacher cannot see their teacher cannot know about. Yes, of course, we know the standards that the tests cover, and that's what we teach all year long. But when you're eight and nine, the test is more about your ability to interpret the directions and to interpret the, um, the way the questions are worded. And if you are eight and nine and you don't know one or two words in the question, you kind of give up and that is what I've seen in many kids through the years and it, it's really heartbreaking because these are amazing good smart kids who deserve better than the tests we give them. Anyway, soapbox kick to the side. That is what we did primarily this week and um, so we're as ready as we're going to be. Monday morning will bring a fresh sort of issues, I'm sure, a fresh batch of all kinds of crazy, but we're gonna get through it the best we can. We're gonna have some fun afterwards and that is gonna be our uh, Monday. Another cool thing we did today was we learned about, one of our reading passages was about Malala Yousafzai. I think I'm saying that maybe a little bit wrong, but that's how I've always said it in my head, so that's how I say it out loud. Anyway, she was the um, uh, little girl from Pakistan who was shot by the Taliban for desiring and going to school. She wanted to go to school, she wanted to be educated, and she spoke out against their ruling that girls would not get to do that. And the kids were absolutely mystified by that. We talked about how fortunate we are in our country that we do get many opportunities that children in other countries and just people in general in other countries do not get. And so we watched a video uh, little video clips actually about Malala and I told them I have read several books by her well her book her uh, autobiography and also some other books we listened to her book The Magic Pencil and that is a wonderful book and she's still fine um, my husband just came down so we read uh, we listened to a reading of that book and my kids all day were saying, well, not every single one of them, but a lot of them were saying, Mrs. Butler, isn't it just amazing what she said? She said, one child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. And, oh, I'm just gonna cry thinking about it, but she was the 2014, 2014? Yes, 
uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, youngest ever to receive that award. And if you have a chance to learn about her, she is amazing. Her books are amazing. Her life is amazing. Her family is amazing. And the things that she is continuing to do to further young girls' um, chances of becoming educated in countries that um, do not readily allow that is amazing. So my kids love to learn about her. They want to know more. And so I will be finding more information on Malala and maybe reading a book or two to them um, in the afternoons this next week. So I'm going to make that my passion project this weekend to find um, more goodies on Malala. I have written a book study to go with her book called um, She Dared, I think it is, something to that effect. And um, it, it was um, an amazing story. It's a true story about everything that she went through. So. I don't know if we're going to have time for me to read them that book, but I might read them just excerpts of it because they really seem to like it. Anyway, I am going to close out the vlog here. If you uh, enjoyed any of this footage, please give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to help me grow my channel. Please remain positive about the world we live in and have a wonderful week. Goodbye.